Hey everybody, I'm outside. I'm going to do an outdoor book review about The Next Civil War by Stephen Marchi. Dispatches from the American Future. Okay, it, uh, it has five scenarios of how a Civil War could come about. They're pretty good. The guy is a little, but you, you can't blame him too much because he's Canadian. Oh, Canada, oh, Canada. He's a little bit on the leftist leaning side. But then again, he's Canadian. So what do you expect? Um, the uh, scenarios are, well, first of all, there's a pretty long introduction. Then there's the Battle of the Bridge, where Civil War basically starts out because of uh, some federal authorities and some local authorities disagree on how this bridge should be fixed. Uh, so, and next thing you know, the sheriff's becoming a hero and starting a militia, and all these other people are coming to his town, and he's deputizing them and whatnot. And then the military comes in because the president or whatever tells them to. And the governor don't want to have nothing to do with it, so the president has to do something. And the president makes the call, and it's just basically a rallying and crawl. Scenario um, four kind of is like scenario one, which is the outbreak of widespread violence. That's where militias and organized crime and gangs, basically the federal government falls. Um, there's a there's a dispatch where it talks about how a person would assassinate the president. And at this time, since we're so polarly, polarly divided in the United States, uh, how a presidential assassination could cause uh, basically a civil war. Um, then there's one where the fall of New York happens. And uh, in that particular case, New, New York is one of the like major economic centers. And if, say, climate change, polar ice caps, or whatever. Like I said, the guy is a little leftist leaning. Um, were to, or a natural disaster or something, was to able to knock New York out and pretty much all of that area, which would be kind of New England, really, um, area. That would cause economic depression and recession and all that stuff all across whatever the United States calls them basically a civil war of sorts um, then there's a uh, dish fact five which is the unlikeliest occurrence but the peacefulest occurrence where uh, secession is allowed and uh, it's called the end of the republic and in that particular one uh, what happens is basically you divide the United States into four parts it's a uh, kind of Dixieland the South or the Republic of the United States of America. Then there's uh, the North, Northern areas or New England, which is the United States of America. Uh, then there's California and Texas. And it could be a mixture of any of those. Um, like Texas could, some of the states could go with Texas. Some of the states on the near California could go with it. Uh, then you'd have New England, you know, border states might pick or choose where they want to go because they're border states. And it's basically saying how when you go into the United States, each state and each area is kind of their own country. They have their own identity and whatnot. So we're already divided and how California is mostly blue and Texas is mostly red. Uh, that's how give or take most states are and that Texas and California would be the only two states that actually have the economic and military resources to basically be their own country um, and it talks about how secession could work if it did work um, kind of each chapter has a lot of good information that's not just like a historical 
narrative of here's what's happening. It's more like a historical narrative of how it would happen. And it goes into details about other stuff, um, such as terrorism. And he uses the right word right-wing extremism a lot, but he wants to clump white nationalists and uh, Nazis, or I guess they call them Nazis, new Nazis, the new Nazi party here in the United States. Uh, those type of people, he wants to clump them with white with and white supremacists and white nationalists. He wants to clump those in with right right with right wing extremists. Problem with that is white nationalists, white power, and white uh white nationalists, white power, uh type people, the racists, are as bad as black power, black extremists and whatnot. And in reality, the Democrat Party ha is the history of the party of slavery, the party of whiteness. They're the white party. So he gets it wrong. I guess he believes the myth of the flip-flop where the party somehow switched which never happened. Um, and he gets the idea that the, that um, the Nazis, which Nazis actually were communists, socialists, and contrary to popular opinion, communists, socialists, and um, fascists are not right-wing. They're left-wing um, uh, ideologies. They're not right-wing ideologies. They're left-wing ideologies. Uh, I mean, if you look at who's pushing communism and socialism in America today, it's the left-wing, not the right-wing. So, so people that are white supremacists, white nationalists, and uh, communist pushers, um, socialism pushers, New, the new Nazis, um, they're, contrary to popular opinion, they're left-wing, not right-wing. So, um, just like Antifa, which claims that they're, is actually a left-wing wing militia, BLM, Black Panthers, uh, Black Nationalists, Black, um, see, he, he doesn't clump the right-wing and the left-wing militias in the right section. He wants to push them all to the... He wants to push left-wing militias into the right-wing category, and he wants to push the okay left-wing people into the right... The, 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 he wants to push some of the okay right-wingers into the left-wing category. So that, that's kind of... He won't... Uh, so, so that's why, like I said, he's a little bit on the liberal side, or the social, or the... Or the because he doesn't put the categories where they're supposed to go um, ideologically speaking um, anyway uh, so it's a pretty good book it does um, it does explain how there's a bunch of different groups that are basically pissed off with the United States government and don't like the government but they do love their country and I like it better if he would have instead of said right wing patriots, he would have just said militant patriots. He wants to categorize a bunch of people into the extremist category. He's also saying that yeah, the right wingers are more prepared for it to happen, but then again, it's the military is the military. Well, he he does say that. Historically, trying to stop insurrections don't work because it's like mowing the grass. <laughs> you cut it down, and then they pop back, weeds pop back up, right? So, and then you have to cut it again and again. So, yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, that's how, that's why we don't really win in the war in the Middle East. 
because this the strategy to stop in directions is is basically a, a flawed strategy in the first place uh, he uh, pushed on the idea that a lot of the military probably wouldn't want to fight actual United States citizens unless they had to uh, which is correct um, pushed on the fact that a smaller militia wouldn't be able to handle the power of the United States military but then since they're popping up here 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 and all over the place it really wouldn't matter it's pretty hard to stop he also pushed on the idea that gun control is impossible in the United States we just already have too many guns too many gun owners the majority of Americans own a gun whether their whether their political beliefs is right-wing or left-wing um, he pushed on a bunch of uh, truth in here a bunch of knowledge about the weather and stuff for that um, scenario about New York leaving uh, and other different things uh, so he really thoroughly researched and investigated he talked to actual people from these different militia camps he talked to uh, from he went to gun shows he went to survivalist shows he went to talk to actual military people he talked to FBI CIA type people that are in the government that would deal with this kind of stuff uh, like IETF alcohol tobacco and firearms which is unconstitutional by the way um, he uh, talked to different militias groups different constitutionalists he talked to different pacifists he talked to people like um probably he's probably even talked to people from like the occupy wall street and those different kind of movements because he's pretty much saying that the left tries to use politics while the right would just want to use force it's not exactly true because he, a lot of the riots we had were left wing or using basically violence and force just to push a political narrative he also pushed the idea that it's kind of silly that groups that the police are working with the wrong groups and in his mind the wrong groups are the left wingers because the left wingers for, for the police to work with left wingers is kind of silly because they're the ones who want to defend the police and are killing are basically going out and killing cops in some cases so or trying to use politics to get rid of the police he's he does say that we need police reform which i'll agree we do kind of need some police reform but i'm thinking we need military reform too because some of our military and he's also this book was kind of done right after trump was elected so it's a little all outdated to a degree um but still pretty good it, one of 2022 Wow, it's not that all outdated. He said that, well, it's it's not outdated and it's 2022. It's a pretty fairly new book. He did say that that uh, he doesn't seem like he's a liker of Trump much, but he doesn't like Joe Biden at all. He's like, Joe Biden didn't do anything for the country. Uh, Trump just, Trump's not the cause of the divide. The divide's already been here. It's been here a long time and the collapse of the United States is going to happen pretty much is what he's saying um, it's just can it happen peacefully he doesn't think so he thinks eventually something's going to something's got to go something's got to give and I kind of believe with, believe and agree with him but he kind of wants the secession thing to work by the rest of the world recognizing these four different countries <laughs> it doesn't work yeah, I mean, seriously. He's saying the next, basically, he thinks the next Civil War won't be over. It'll be like Republican versus Democrat or white versus black. I disagree. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think it'll be conservative, traditional values versus liberal lunatic values that don't have any value at all personally anyway 
check it out read it it's got good information even though it's from more of a leftist perspective uh i wonder if a, a right person has made a perspective of this so he pushes on a bunch of good points but also i think he gets some stuff wrong um but that's because his politics are wrong and you can't blame him because he's canada but he's from canada right so the canadians they're just crazy crazy but yeah good book go read it check it out and uh see what it's all about and I don't know what else to say. Um, oh, yeah. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And that's what America was founded on. God. God, small government, and good values. But what the left wants is no God, large government, and secular values, which aren't any of any value. <laughs> at all so who do you think will win the next civil war comment down below also who do you think the next civil war will be over will it be uh i mean yeah he also did push on the narrative that both the myth of states rights and the myth of fighting for slavery are both myths in the uh the North believes they fought for slavery, which is a lie, and the South believes they fought for states' rights. He believes both of those are myths that were have been perpetuated to this day. That's a good little um side note to think. Anyway, remember God's good all the time. All the time, God's good. Keep on gaming. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Jesus loves you, Jesus God, Jesus Lord, Jesus King, Jesus rule everything. Have a great one for the day. Later.